Nice okay. to meet you all. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you, too. Too. We are now live, so let me get the little map out. I'm going to click on Tennessee, and then I'll say good morning, and we'll get going. So, And let me, um, <clears throat> let's see. I guess I should put my video on. There's Eileen. Hi, Eileen. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Hi. I got to put my video on here. Not that you guys care, but there we go. Start video. Okay. <sighs> let me get this way down here. Okay, so I'm going like, who's Kelly? Hey, because I've got a, one guy, Sebastian, who's on all the time, and then this gal, Kathy, said she was going to be on. So but if not, people do watch it later, and I think the password makes it confusing. So um, I've, I'll do better about that in the future. Oh, so Eileen got password. I sent all that to her. Okay, so Eileen figured it out. Okay. Um, good morning, Tennesseans. Welcome to Talking About Money Walking to Tennessee. Actually, it's good afternoon for y'all back there. So I really appreciate you taking time out of the middle of your day to help me out here. And I uh, just want to start by introducing myself. Then I'll introduce each of um, you, have you guys introduce yourselves. And then um, we will start talking about your respective towns. So uh, my name is Rebecca White and I'm originally from Oregon. I lived in San Francisco, California over 20 years. And Despite being here that long, I'm still constantly in shock by how expensive everything is. Our median price for houses right now is about $1.7 million. A friend of mine posted yesterday that prices for houses had gone up over like 11% from last year to this year. So houses are still very expensive flying off the shelf. Where we're seeing a little slowdown in the market is the condos, simply because we have more of them and that's more <clears> of the entry point. And it's taking a little bit longer to sell mostly because of COVID. But our median price on those is still about 1.3 to 1.4 million dollars. And now that people don't always have to work from home or might just be tired of the crowds, the crime, the homeless, the fires, uh, people are getting out of uh, San Francisco. They're getting out of California. In fact, if you look at this entire map here, um, it shows California as really, really, really red. So red states are ones that are losing a lot of wealth. This is based upon IRS data on when the taxpayer moves from one state to another. And we've already covered all these states here that are pretty green and this one. And now we're going over here and covering these states next. So this week is about Tennessee and I'm very excited. Um, I just wanna share one little story real quickly before we get going. I talked to Jody's team leader, Doug, yesterday and we were talking about Berkshire Hathaway and Gina Blafari because I'm part of Intero and Intero is a Berkshire Hathaway affiliate meaning they bought our stock but did, didn't take us over like they took over the credentials and we both think the world of Gino and Gino was our original CEO and he's still you know we're still his child he loves Intero uh, but now he's the CEO of uh, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services of America but Doug was saying that Gino has bought 20 houses in Chattanooga from him over the last four or five years. So there must be some good things about Chattanooga. So I'm definitely looking forward to hearing about that. So before I digress too much, we'll just go through here real quickly. Um, Peggy, no, actually Jody, you're on the call first. So just introduce yourself, Jody. We'll go Jody, Peggy, and then um, David. And just say quickly who you are where you are and who you work for. Just real quickly about a one, one minute introduction, please. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm Jody Culp. I'm located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and I work for Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, J. Douglas Properties, and I'm a member of the Edrington team. So I'm on Doug's team. How, how long have you been in real estate? I've been in real estate only actually for a couple of months. I was with uh, a large uh, hotel company for 30 years with Marriott. And just recently, uh, I bought in Chattanooga, fell in love with the city, and then Doug asked me to join the team. So actually, only just a few months. Wow, this is baptism by fire, being in on a being on a call like this, then, huh? So right. Thank you. thank you for being brave, Peggy. Tell oh, us about you. you. Um, hi, I'm Peggy St. Peters. I live outside of Nashville, and. Um, have been a realtor here for eight years. I've been in the state for 13. Um, I work for Coldwell Banker Lakeside in Hendersonville, Tennessee. And uh, I will just say so many people here are transplants. 
that it's not at all unusual. Um, so I'll tell you more whenever it's my turn again. <laughs> we are looking forward to it. David, tell us about yourself, please. Yes, ma'am. I'm uh, David Martin uh, from Knoxville, Tennessee. I am in my 23rd year in the business with Smoky Mountain Realty and um, excited to be here uh, with everybody today. Great, thank you so much. So um, if you hear noise, I have, a, I have two birds and one of them gets kind of excited when I'm talking sometimes. So uh, just hopefully he won't be too bad. And if he does, I'll just have to take a break and cover him up. But my first question I wanna to talk to you about is um, tell us about your market in general. We'll just keep going with you, David. Uh, what is, What's the economy like? What's the job situation like? Maybe talk a little bit about the tax situation. Peggy and I talked about that too. But people want to know, you know, is it going to be a lot more affordable? What do you get for a quarter million dollars, half a million dollars, and um, uh, three quarters of a million dollars or even a million dollars? You know, what's the median price? Just talk about the, the business, the economy, the jobs, the taxes, just kind of those business things that uh, would make logical or very objective reasons to move to Tennessee? Uh, so first of all, it, uh, we have a very strong economy. Knoxville is a great place to live. Uh, one of the driving forces behind that is we have a really low cost of living. So when you look at um, our cost of living compared to many of the other states in the country, uh, Knoxville ranks uh, right up there uh, at one of the lowest cost of living cities in the country. Uh, the obviously, and, and the other girls can attest to this, another driving factor um, for not only just Knoxville, but Tennessee in general, is we have no state income tax. Um, so that's really big. And, and we do see a lot of uh, really an influx of people moving into the area, which we did not see that uh, on this level, probably 15, 10 to 15 years ago. Um, our average price point uh, right now is $282,946. Of course, that number changes a little bit. Let me give you that number, um, qualify that. That is from January through August the 31st for the entire year. So it's 282,946. Just a little kind of a neat thing that, that I threw together uh, in comparing where we are right now to this time last year. So currently we're 99% of uh, closing price to list price and uh, $129 a square foot. Uh, if you go back 12 months ago, uh, the average price was $260,583. Uh, sale to list was almost at 98% and price per square foot was 119, a little over $119, so we'll call it 120. So, you know, just in this short period, um, we've kind of seen an increase of about $10 a square foot in a very short amount of time. But um, so that's the climate of our real estate market right here in Knoxville. Um, and, and just a couple of things that, that to touch on that, that you brought up of why somebody would want to come to this area. Uh, of course, I've mentioned the cost of living. I've mentioned the uh, no state income tax, but we're really diverse in what we have to offer. Uh, employment opportunity here is outstanding. Uh, you know, there's opportunities at the medical center, UT Medical Center. We have plants such as Sea Ray, Sea Ray Boats, Malibu Boats, Volkswagen, and, and there's many, many more. Um, the other thing is, is, is huge for our area is outdoors. So most people don't realize this, but we have oh. some of the best lakes. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that in the second part when I okay. talk about the, the quality of life thing. This is okay. just a purely business thing. So it sounds like you get a, a lot more bang for your buck. We're about 10 times more expensive here. So that's really great because it looks like you're close to the Smoky Mountains here. So we'll look forward to We're hearing about close. that in a couple of yeah, minutes. So close. great. So um, let's see, Peggy, tell us about, uh, and you are, are you like right here, Peggy? Like North, is that where you are? What county are you in? 
No. So um, I, I principally sell Sumner County, but then of course the red in the middle is Davidson. The red, yeah. So that's Nashville proper is the red. And oh, um, that's Sumner really green County, there. Yeah. So Sumner is where uh, my office is. And then immediately below the red is um, Williamson County. And that also has um, right below the red. Yep. Uh, that also has just shocking growth. I mean, you're yeah. seeing a ton of growth. I mean, you're uh, getting people from LA, Chicago, Orange County, and Williamson County. Have, uh, you're getting um, people from LA, Orange County. You're getting a lot of Californians there. Wow. And okay. we love Californians. <laughs> Come on, Californians. Um, they seem to also appreciate it here for numerous reasons. And certainly one of the biggest ones is the price of homes and the cost of living. I will say occasionally we have people who think they can come and they tell me they want lakefront with a dock and they wanna pay 500,000 or something like that. So we are definitely a bargain. And I believe this is true of all of Tennessee is certainly when you're talking relative to California, but obviously a really beautiful home here is gonna cost more than these numbers that we're you know, when you start talking average home uh, price, obviously it's the average home price. So just so that nobody gets on and thinks that somehow for a million dollars, they're going to get 45 acres and a mansion uh, because you're not. Um, but anyway, uh, we are median sales price is uh, 334, $334,000 right now. Average sales price, 337 thousand dollars right now um average approximate price per square foot is 150 dollars um and the bargains right now the home sales are going up 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 we have sold right through covid we were essential services here in tennessee so we never took a break and in fact people started moving here honestly pretty darn much right from the beginning. And of course, Tennessee has been a draw for a number of years for across the country, but I feel like COVID has brought it to the extreme. Um, it seems like anybody who sort of was thinking about it, all of a sudden, bam, they're making it happen. Um, so the bargains are in the city, in the urban areas. Um, Young people now who want to move to the city are actually able to get new construction for uh, as low as you know two hundred thousand dollars. Obviously, not talking about a big place, but a one-bedroom, beautiful new construction you can actually get for two hundred thousand dollars. And in a lot of cases, the builders are actually bargaining a little bit, which is unheard of. But um, there's no doubt the city has been hit. The hardest. Um, the college kids are not here, they're remote, and a lot of uh, people have moved to wherever, to their parents or wherever it is that they're going to remote work. So um, if someone was looking for a bargain right now, that is where it is. Um, our listings are down 18% from this time last year, but our sales, crazy enough, are up 12% from this time last year. So basically if it goes on the market here, it sells, which is not something that we have ever experienced as long as I've been a realtor, you know? Uh, so it's been, it's been a crazy, amazing ride. We also have, uh, you know, Amazon has come recently to Nashville and made a big difference. Mitsubishi moved here uh, just at the end of last year. Facebook uh, has a new big, uh, center they're bringing here. So big companies now moving to Nashville. And um, so the economy here is stable. Um, so wow. Plus you've got all the country music stuff there too, which we can well, talk about I, a little bit. Okay. I know, I didn't even get into that because I thought yeah. she was going to tell me to wait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. I, I just, no, I, I had no idea. This is, it's really been fun for me because I do get to learn a lot. So same question for... Um, Jody, tell us about Chattanooga. You're down here in um, Hamilton County, which is again very green, and yeah. you're getting wealth from Chicago and uh, other parts of Tennessee from LA. Boy, those 
people, those Angelinos go everywhere. It's crazy. Almost any time <laughs> I look anywhere, any state, people are moving from Los Angeles. So tell us about Chatt Chattanooga. Yeah, so it's going to be a lot of what we've heard from the other cities, right? So um, median home price this year is 247000 now that is up 23% from 2019. So it's really, you know, Chattanooga real estate has taken off anymore. It's appreciated at about a about a 10 to 13% increase year over year, which is which is great. Inventory is down. So as of this morning, we had 1,366 uh, properties for sale in the greater Chattanooga area, which is down 49% from last year. So inventory is down so things aren't on the market very long uh which is great but it also in in this it's like buyers you know you find something you like you got to move pretty quickly on it just because of you know these all-time record lows as far as inventory um the edgerton team you know in 2019 did 376 sides so this year we've done 368 so we're going to finish way more sides than we had last year which is just showing how strong this market is um there's a lot. It's, you know, we got the nickname of Gig City. So it's the gigabit internet service, which is big for technology companies. So that's a big draw here, um, as well as one of the top industries here is healthcare. So um, it's, uh, it's just a great time to buy in Chattanooga. We're seeing a lot of people that are buying from California sight unseen. And there's, you know, we had a couple transactions in the office this year that people from California bought and they didn't see it until they flew in for the closing. Um, because it's just, it's, you, you can get a lot for your money here. So for example, 250, we have a, a listing that is a three bedroom, two bath, fully furnished Airbnb, about three miles from downtown, um, in kind of the historic district. And, you know, for twos, threes, you're buying in the historic district, about a mile and a half from downtown that might need a little bit of work, but not a lot. You know, for five hundred thousand, you're maybe going thirty minutes outside the city, and you could find something perhaps on the water, uh, maybe in just under an acre, but waterfront property. Going up from that, you know, seven fifty, you're going to be on one of the ridges in Signal Mountain, um, or up on Missionary Ridge with gorgeous views of the city that um, is just spectacular. So there's just definitely a lot for so many price points, as well as new construction is booming in Ottawa and some. Some city, some areas that are right outside of downtown. So it's uh, it's pretty exciting. Great, thank you very much. Now I'm going to turn it over to Eileen because if you look at the state of Tennessee as a whole, um, most of the wealth comes from Illinois. And if we, as we saw in several of those counties, uh, a lot of that was Cook County. And Eileen is from just outside of um, Chicago, so I'm going to have her. Um, just introduce yourself real quickly, Eileen. Tell us about you, who you are, uh, where you work, what you do, and maybe just a bit about your market so we can contrast what the prices are in Chicago or Algonquin with the prices in Tennessee. And that might explain why so many people from your area are moving south. Hi, everyone. I'm Eileen Kelsall. Um, I grew up on the south side of Chicago, and I now live in the Northwest suburbs. And I live in Elgin, Illinois, and I work for Coldwell Banker Real Estate Group in Algonquin, Illinois. And um, that is about 35 miles west, northwest of O'Hare, uh, you know, O'Hare Airport. Um, our market here, um, I would say that the, uh, Median price in our Algonquin area it is in about the 270s. Um, and anything in our market that is 250 and below is like flying off the shelves. Um, so, and even now at this point, um, the homes that are priced in the 300 to 350 range are starting to sell rather quickly also. Um, the main reason why I can see that um, people are leaving Illinois and going to wonderful states like Tennessee is we have a very, very high uh, real estate taxes. 
um, one of the highest taxing states in the country. So as I can see, you know, what's changing in Illinois that's easily, um, you know, promoting people to move out of our states. So, but I've um, been a realtor here since uh, February of 2011. And um, I will, you know, I work in five different counties. So I will uh, work in Kane, McHenry, DuPage, Lake, and um, Southern Cook. So we have a lot of uh, a lot of counties that are very close together. So and I've actually uh, you can it's very easy to visit any of those five counties in one day. And then a lot of people from all over there are moving south. So do you, do you do a lot of work in Cook County as well? Um, a lot of people moving from Tennessee to Tennessee from. Um, I do some work in Cook County. Cook County is very large. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't do um, real estate necessarily in downtown Chicago. Okay. Um, you know, the major portion, but um, the Chicago suburbs of Cook Great. County. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Parts of our discussions, if um, we could take turns and talk about um, the schools in your area and what's going on with the schools, the school ratings, and um, are there universities nearby where you sell your real estate? So I'll jump in there real quick. Uh, that's one of the uh, one of the bright spots for Knoxville, uh, not only from a public education standpoint, but, but even uh, private education that's offered. We have some of the best um, public schools in the state uh, at Oak Ridge, Maryville, Knoxville. Uh, and of course we are, um, I, I live about 20 minutes from the University of Tennessee, so go balls. Um, so that's always a big draw. Uh, but definitely that, that plays a factor into the decision-making of people moving into our area is uh, they, they certainly don't see a drop or any sacrifice in education. And many times they see it's a step up uh, from where they're coming from. So we're very blessed uh, in our area to uh, pro provide really good education. And I'll tip to you, you ladies. Um, you know, Nashville, of course, is a, a big enough city that uh, we have uh, five universities that I thought of just off the top of my head, um, including uh, MTSU, which is the largest in the state. Of course, it has a lot of satellites. So, um, But we also have Ball State University here, uh, which is a community college, Ball State Community College, sorry. And um, it's really notable that community college in the state of Tennessee is free for residents. So if someone came here and established residency, they could literally get two years of college for free. And this includes adults. You don't have to be coming out of high school. Um, so that is kind of huge. And I actually give our state a lot of credit for managing to have the low tax rate that we have and also really great higher education. Um, our property taxes are a huge reason that people move here. We're actually half the, we're half of the national average. So literally, if you take the national average of property taxes, the state of Tennessee as a whole is um, half that. So it's, um, it's, a, we have great, you know, our taxes are a huge reason people move here. So. Great. And just to piggyback on that same thing, we uh, we have some of the top rated schools here in Chattanooga. Um, and then we have U University of Tennessee Chattanooga is here right downtown. So that's a, another draw. Um, but we, you know, some some top rated STEM schools are also located in Chattanooga, which is which is well. So it's the same as we're hearing from, you know, Knoxville and Nashville. Um, schools are strong here and strongly rated and uh, and definitely one of the draws here. Thank you. Um, the next point to talk about is um, 
medical care. And it seems like there is a high concentration of health and uh, wealth in your areas. Um, I mean, I can go I, for, I can no, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, so we have Erlinger Health Center here, which is the seventh largest public health system um, in the country. And it's actually the second largest employer here in Chattanooga. So that's just a little bit about the Chattanooga healthcare. Go ahead, Peggy. I just was going to say, I know that you mentioned that uh, healthcare was one of the big uh, employers in your area and people always have a hard time believing this, but tourism is actually number two in Nashville and healthcare is number one. We have uh, some of the headquarters of major uh, hospital chains are here. So we have excellent healthcare. Come on, Eileen, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. And then um, is the um, insurance uh, affordable in your state? for health insurance? I don't know, is health insurance affordable anywhere? <laughs> I don't know, that's why I'm wondering. Um, it is in California, <laughs> we're socialists. Okay. <laughs> so just to jump in there real quick, um, uh, UT Medical Center is our largest uh, medical center. Obviously they employ a lot of people. Uh, so that would kind of be the anchor. Of course, we have Park West Hospital. Both of those specialize uh, in, in many different uh, facets of health. Uh, as far as affordability of insurance, um, you know, that, that's, I feel like we do offer some opportunities uh, and programs, uh, but I think that's a um, kind of a bigger challenge, not just really nationwide, not just specifically to Tennessee, but nationwide, that's a little bit of a hurdle. There are opportunities out there. Um, you just, it's one of those, you gotta, gotta research and research and research and until you find what really fits your family the best. Thank you. All right, our next point is um, reasons for people to relocate to your area and or retire and um, what attractions are, are desirable in your areas? I'll, I'll jump in, I guess. <laughs> uh, Jody and Peggy probably are getting tired of hearing me talk. But, no, uh, not at all. <laughs> You're good so, to follow. My, my answer and now you can talk about the Smoky Mountains. That's and right. That's, that's and right. maybe that, that, that Tennessee whiskey or something. Too. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's closer to Peggy. So Peggy. <laughs> okay. Risky. Yeah, I got a couple questions about that stuff when we get there. So, okay, go ahead. <laughs> my, my answer would be, would, would apply for not only people, younger folks moving to the area, but also retirees. So it would be a twofold. Um, I kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but we have, uh, interestingly enough, we have some of the best lakes in the country and Teleco Lake and Fort Loudon Lake. Those are power boat lakes. Um, there are miles and miles and miles of hiking opportunity, anything outdoors, kayaking, uh, paddle boarding, and of course, you know, the Smoky Mountain uh, National Park is about an hour from us. Um, so those are huge draws, um, you know, for people moving that into our area. Um, as, as corny as it may sound, uh, we're probably still um, what most people would consider low traffic areas. So the traffic congestion is not terribly bad. Um, the downtown areas is, 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 a, is a big draw, a lot of festivals. Of course, you can get a downtown loft it's, if, if something like that were to interest you. Um, and then as you ladies had already talked, I mean, our, uh, the, the tax portion uh, property tax portion portion is is huge, and I can you know I can go on and on and on, but I'll I'll stop right there and 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 let the ladies jump in. But a myriad of reasons to to relocate to Knoxville, Tennessee. Not to mention the weather is really good. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, one of the things about Tennessee uh, that people seem to like is that 
we're south enough that we have great weather and we have four seasons, um, but we're not so south and you interpret that however you want. This is a much more uh, mixed uh, population, tons and tons of people who were not necessarily born here. Um, Southern hospitality is real. People are nice for no particular reason and they will do amazing things uh, just because. So um, that's always a, a wonderful thing. We've talked about the lower cost of living in general. Uh, the no income tax is huge. We here in Nashville have uh, easy access to uh, professional sports. We've got professional football, soccer, and hockey. Um, we also, as you alluded to, have music and entertainment throughout the state, but certainly here you can, when things are normal, not COVID time, you can literally walk into a sandwich shop and there's somebody playing guitar. Like uh, live music is something that we really appreciate and um, consider ourselves to be appreciative of every piece of the music, not just the celebrities standing on stage, but all of the people working with them and the writers and all of it. So this is a town that really appreciates music and that's part of the reason that musicians love to play here. And um, it's easy to see them. If you want to see music, it's easy. The beautiful landscape um, is a, also a very real thing. Um, I will say for uh, David and Jody that that, you know, there's parts of the state where, which is where people are escaping now. If somebody's trying to escape COVID and they want a break, you know, uh, the Smoky Mountains are where they're going. So that's not Nashville, but certainly Tennessee. Um, we have here also Old Hickory Lake, which we call a lake, but in fact is part of a river that goes all the way from the north of the United States down through uh, Florida. So it's a navigable waterway, but um, for us locally, it's dammed and um, it's a huge part of the personality of the area. Um, so we have tons of celebrities. If somebody's, I, I have people come to town who want to sort of, you know, stalk celebrity houses. And uh, one of the things that celebrities like here is that it's low key. They don't tend to get swamped. You see people just walking down the street, seriously famous people walking down the street and you'll also see that there's nobody chasing them. Um, I'm not gonna pretend that people don't, you know, give a little bit of selfie action from a distance, but in general, they leave them alone and that's part of what draws them. So we have major Hollywood celebrities as well, of course, as tons of musicians. So there's a lot of reasons for every different point of your life to wanna to come to Nashville. Thank you. And Jody? Yeah, so a lot of the same things Peggy and David talked about, which I love both their cities. I just spent the last four years living in Nashville. Love it. Been in Knoxville a couple times. Great, great city. So you're seeing like this definite trend around the state. Um, again, cost of living, affordability, um, the state income tax, mm -hmm. accessibility for Chattanooga. So in two hours, less than two hours, you're in Nashville. Less than two hours, you're in Knoxville. You're in Atlanta, um, you can go down to Birmingham. I mean, it's just a very accessible city. Um, the seasons, the weather, as Peggy was saying, I mean, it doesn't get too cold, it doesn't get too hot. We don't have a lot of snow. So it's nice to have that change of seasons. And then again, the, the kind of what's synonymous again is the, the outdoors, right? So everywhere, you know, in Chattanooga, you walk out and you see mountains around you and we have a river running through it and all the hiking and biking and and rafting and kayaking that's within 30 minutes of downtown and sometimes even closer. I just uh, discovered a 95 acre park called Stringers Ridge right downtown Chattanooga. So you don't even have to drive 30 minutes if you wanna go hiking on some trails, it's like right downtown. So um, it's just the, the outdoors, the Southern hospitality. There's a great restaurant scene here, live music. Um, it's, it's growing from a city, but it still has that small town feel. So you're walking through downtown and you see the same people walking, the business owners. And so it's got this really, um, the charm of a small Southern town, but it's, it's growing as a city, which is great. Wow. Well, that all sounds really, really good. Doesn't it, Eileen? Are you ready to move yet? Uh, I'm thinking about it. <laughs> 
So I'm, I'm going to jump in and um, just uh, we'll ask you all to summarize. We've heard a lot, a lot of good. We had, you know, we've asked a lot of questions. We've talked about the personal reasons, the business reasons. If you could kind of think back through everything you shared with us and each one of you pick the top two or three reasons why someone should move to your town. We'll start with Peggy in Nashville. What are the top two or three reasons why Eileen or I should think about moving to Nashville? Well, I think that um, one of the things that I have to say I do like right now, <laughs> we um, this is timely, not a long-term reason, but in the middle of all of the political mess that has been happening, I have to say it's relatively calm here. There were peaceful protests, um, but they're done pretty much. And I do think that um, people respect one another. So just from a, the people here um, has been really great for me. And I've loved the other places that I've lived and I'm not dissing any, uh, but I, you understand what I mean, that um, it's, a, it's a pretty safe place and um, people are kind. I think that's a, a really big deal. The other, the, well, I'll tell you, not necessarily to personalize it to you two, but just in general, a lot of the people that I have, specifically from California this year, they are coming here because it is so, they, for them, they sell their little box that's luckily for them somewhere near the water and they make a fortune and they can come here and spend half of that and have something really beautiful. There are really beautiful homes and neighborhoods and you know, we have them on the golf course and we have them on the water. So you can have a, you can improve your quality of life, quite frankly. And um, I actually think this is not as true in California, but I'm sorry, Eileen, I will pick a little bit on Chicago. I did live there that the whole quality of life thing, the weather, it, it improves your mood. It improves the number of days you can be outside. It, um, it means you're a little bit more active. So that's not a small thing. Um, so anyway, I, I could go on, but those were three, so. So Jody, what would be the top two or three reasons to move to Chattanooga? Um, affordability, you know, more bang for the buck. Um, with what you can buy here, you can then buy, you know, even a, a weekend home or vacation home in addition to your primary home easily. Um, I would say accessibility and, um, you know, to get to wherever you need to go, big major cities. Um, and then the, it's a very diversified city. And I think not getting into any politics at all, but there's just a great diversification here. And it's, um, it's really awesome to see in our city. Great, thanks. And uh, David, last but not least, if you had to pick just two or three reasons to move to Chattanooga, I'm sorry, Knoxville, Knoxville. I just, I don't know, you're over here. So if you had to pick two or three reasons to move to where you are, what would those, what would those be? Well, Jody and, and Peggy have sure summed it up, um, obviously for their cities, but I think that that theme could be carried to Knoxville as well. Um, affordability and cost of living is huge. Uh, the bang for your buck uh, in our area, what you can buy. Um, and then I'll mention one that I feel strongly about that it's not been mentioned is I, I do feel like we offer a very, very strong uh, education opportunities for kids and families, you know, families putting their kids through, uh, um, you know, uh, from kindergarten all the way through high school and then higher learning. So the education opportunities there are, are, are really great uh, to kind of steal some of what Peggy said, just to, and, and Jody, the, the, the Southern hospitality and stress-free living here uh, can't be measured. It was not perfect by any means, but people truly are nice to each other. It's very laid back. And I'll use the word again, just an ease and a stress-free stress living opportunity uh, is, is really, really good. Um, and then I'll close by saying this, who wouldn't want to go to Dollywood? <laughs> yes, <laughs> the, the queen. <laughs> okay, you I, got, I, got, I have a couple right, quick questions so and we'll open it up to, to the audience. And thank you all very much. Hold on, I want to hold, hold on one second, guys, and play this. You guys know this? 
Hold on. I I love this song, a Tennessee waltz. So my question is, is there such a thing? Is there really a Tennessee waltz? Dance one? I mean, Absolutely. <laughs> I bet Jody could do it for us. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, I'm not going to brag, but we, you know, we do it every time we close on a uh, on a piece of property or a house, right? There you go. Absolutely. That you you do it. Say that again. We do She's every time we close on something. We do a Tennessee waltz. No, not really. You want to demonstrate? No. <laughs> that's the ne that's a whole hour. <laughs> well, that was one thing I, I'm also curious because I was thinking um, this morning, and, and Jody and I were talking first because she got on the call first. Is uh, you know what are some of the things that Tennessee is known for? Because I had to, I had to think about this because you think about oh you know there's Kentucky bluegrass or there's Georgia peaches and I thought, is there Tennessee tobacco? I don't know. I thought, oh yeah, there's a Tennessee waltz and then there's Jack Daniels and I guess country music. So are there other things that we don't know about or may not think about right away that Tennessee's known for that, um, you know, when you're there, but not when you're not there type thing that, or things that just, uh, that you're really famous for and you're just proud of? Like maybe the waltz, maybe, maybe whiskey, maybe ribs or something. I don't know. What are some things that really, you know, you're proud of and Tennessee's famous for? Well, we're called, uh -huh. we're called the volunteer state uh, and we're called that for a reason. Um, so, and you kind of touched on that. Jack Daniels, Peggy can allude to that a little bit. Um, so you girls take it away. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I don't remember the whole uh, story of the volunteers, but I believe that went back to Andrew Jackson and uh, you know the Revolutionary War, wasn't it? When uh, the, all of the Tennessee volunteers helped to win a major battle here that changed the um, course of the war. And um, anyway, everybody here we, they are called volunteers. What I certainly were famous for whiskey, but I'll tell you something I'm pretty sure you don't know, Rebecca. Tennessee is actually the originator of a lot of the very famous race horses um, that the horse racing. Um, I'm not a horse person, but I know this is a big deal. Um, raising those horses and selling them was actually a Tennessee thing, not a Kentucky thing. And when Tennessee outlawed betting, it all moved to Kentucky. And so even today, you if you look at the Kentucky Derby, there's usually at least five horses, which is quite a few uh, in the Kentucky Derby that actually originate coming back to Tennessee. So it was a really big horse state until gambling came along and the lack of it in Tennessee is what moved it all to um, Kentucky. And I can't say that I, I know tons about whiskey, except that people like to go to the, uh, you know, to the place, but that uh, go up to the factory. And I know, you know, everybody likes their uh, Jack Daniels, but um, I actually really think one of the big draws, whoops, what happened? I don't know if you can I see just me. stopped sharing so we can look at you. Oh, oh, um, I, and this is not my area. It's uh, closer to David's area, but I believe the Blue Ridge Mountains are one of the number one tourist sites in the United States, not just in Tennessee, but in the United States. So um, that's big. But music, I think, is a pretty big draw. The beauty of the area, there's lots of reasons. Come visit, then you can do another video from here. I could, I'd love to do that. That would be fun. That would be, really be great. So. Um, that's so cool. Uh, Jody, do you have anything to add to that? I mean, it's a big love fest for our state on this call, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. I love it. Um, no, talking about whiskey, something I learned uh, recently is, um, you know, a lot of these whiskey distillers and a lot of distillers are popping up in and around kind of Nashville. But um, Uncle Nearest, if you like whiskey, Uncle Nearest, Nearest Green actually taught Jack Daniels how to make whiskey. Um, and now it's a company that's kind of taken the spirits industry by storm is Uncle Nearest. So that's something I learned recently and I actually enjoy their whiskey. So it's really, it's wow. really nice. But 
Um, music, food, scenery, um, the outdoors, all that. You know, you talked about tobacco and a lot of people don't realize just north of Peggy in Robertson County is they're known for their dark fired um, tobacco up there. So they grow tobacco um, and they, uh, they, you see smoke in tobacco barns all over Robertson County. Um, oh. but yeah, it's just I a have great one state. Last you just... Question, I'm sorry, go ahead, are you done? No. Okay. Yeah, I no, spent, just, I I love, spent a I summer love... in, in Virginia once. And this, I, so I grew up in Oregon. I've lived in California off and on for, I don't know, 30 years or so. And I spent a summer in Virginia. And one thing that just I could not get used to was the humidity. So I'm just curious. You talked about how the weather was nice. You can spend time outdoors. But do y'all have humidity like they do in Florida and Virginia? No, I lived in Florida. I was I'm born in, I was born and raised in Florida, and it's definitely not the humidity you'll see in Florida. I mean, we have it. We're not gonna, you know, you know, say that it's not at all, but it's really not a lot, um, which is great. Very mild. You know, you get used to the warmer weather. Also, I think um, just like you get used to cold. I mean, you get used to it. So in August, it's pretty hot, but um, that is not our maybe our best month our best month is like right now right now when we have this gorgeous long fall or in the spring when it's spring here you know and beginning really the beginning of march and i feel like uh i've lived other places where it was still snowing in april just ha ha here you go um whereas here it's gorgeous at that time so the bumper months are going to be the prettiest months you know jody mentioned something that i just want to follow up on a little bit food, you know, Southern food, oh my gosh, it may not be great for the waistline, but it is pretty darn great. Um, and so the food here is amazing. And of course, we actually have a really happening food scene downtown and um, a, a little bit out, you know, in the suburbs, but certainly downtown, you can hit one incredible restaurant after another. And I'm not talking about the Southern food thing, but uh, certainly if you want that, it's there. But um, some amazing food um, that, I mean, when people come in for the weekend, I think they, uh, they, they may be surprised to find that, but it's really true. And just so you know, um, Mari from Cape Cod, Brian from uh, Atlanta, and Marna from Atlanta, some of our Tom Ferry friends are all watching us on the on a watch Hi party guys. on Facebook. So Hi yeah, not kind of fun. We're going to be going to, we're, we're doing Atlanta next week or Georgia. So Brian and uh, oh, good. Help you with that. So they're so, getting ready. You know, yeah. Rebecca, can I just say one other thing? Um, I've lived in bigger cities and, you know, just I'm going to use the concert venue because that is such a big thing that we do here. When you go to a concert in a massive stadium, I remember doing that and occasionally feeling like, gosh, I could almost be home watching this on the TV and be have just this same view. Whereas here, we don't have massive venues like that. And so when you're at a concert, you feel like you're one with the audience and you feel it has like a feeling to it. Um, you know, we have the Ryman here, which is uh, a very famous music venue. And it's a little funny because it's old church pews. And the very first time you get there, you're like, ooh, I don't know if I like this because you're really close to people. Um, <laughs> I remember the first time I went, I was like, gosh, I feel like I'm on a date with this person I've never met, you know? You're so <laughs> but you get to the point where everybody's singing and swaying. Uh-oh, you froze. Uh, this connection to the music that is fabulous. And at sporting events, it's like that also. You know, the Preds games, I've never experienced anything like it where people are just so, the, the support of the team is so genuine. And um, I'm sure you guys have examples as well, but it, it is a smaller big city, if that makes sense. We still got all that big city stuff, but it's not a big city and it doesn't even really want to be. You know, like they're trying to hold on to that. That's really, really nice. And uh, Sebastian's on the call. Sebastian is, um, he lives in the East Bay here in the Bay Area. Um, mm -hmm. He's been on almost every single call. He's looking to move somewhere in, you know, probably a year. And he's definitely checking everything out. And I think one of his big interests is the taxes, which you alluded to a little bit, Peggy, and someone else. But 
Sebastian, I'll just turn it over to you and you can ask all the questions you want. You have a captive audience of three people who would love to sell you a home in Tennessee. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Yeah, it's been informative. I did have a few questions. Um, so we know that Nashville is known for, for music. Um, I'm curious if uh, Knoxville and, and Chattanooga kind of have their own cultural aspects that, that you know, might not be known by folks outside of Tennessee. So okay. and it's not for you guys on the spot. I'm just curious, you know, if, if there are sort of unique aspects to your, your cities that that you know someone like me on the West Coast might not know about. So just one quick thing um, that that I should have mentioned earlier. Um, Oak Ridge National Laboratory is just minutes down the road. So uh, obviously, they developed the atomic bomb. Um, so that, that I mean, that, that's not anything that's a lure or a draw. That's just kind of something that would give you an idea of what are they known for, or what's come out of the area that you might recognize or, or um, you know, have a draw or, or, or not know about. Um, but, but, you know, the, the, the barbecues in Memphis, the... Um, the music and the Grand Ole Opry's in Nashville and, and Knoxville really is known for their football. Uh, uh, so it's a big, big, big football um, city. Uh, it's almost like a religion here and they really get into it. Uh, people go, you know, by lake, by boat, by car, ball, Navy, all those things are really huge. Um, and then the downtown, not quite as big as Nashville, but the downtown area uh, has a lot of history, a lot of diversity and uh, culture. Uh, and that's something that people probably wouldn't think or recognize about Knoxville. I'd love to talk to you more about it, um, you know, at any given time, but I'll let, uh, I'll let some of the other ladies jump in too. Thank you. Yeah, so, you know, Chattanooga has, um, you know, definitely an arts and culture scene. There's the Tivoli Theater, there's the Bluff Arts District with, with several um, galleries and museums. The downtown is very walkable and downtown's on the water. So it's got a lot of um, urban trails and, and bike, you know, bike trails and, and stuff to do. So um, a lot to do downtown um, without even having to leave the city, which is, which is really great. So it works for people that want to have that kind of a little bit of a city feel and walk everywhere. You know, the downtown lofts are taking off even more in Chattanooga. People are moving downtown. They're moving, you know, I bought a place that's about a quarter mile from downtown. Uh, so I love that walkability of it. I've lived in LA and I've lived in New York City and Philadelphia and I wanted some place I could walk everywhere and not get in my car on the weekends. But that was until I got into real estate. Now I'm in my car all weekend. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's got a lot to offer, which is, which is great, especially from somebody moving from a bigger city that kind of wants that, that arts and culture feel. And uh, the live music here is, is definitely a scene that's growing. That's good to hear. I mean, great, thanks. Really thanks. Good, what uh, about one thing we talked about before, the, um, I mean, we're so used to being these bastions of liberalness here on the West Coast, especially in California and the Bay Area. And, I remember once I was in Missouri and driving through and seeing these billboards that were definitely Republicans and everybody was Republican. And it was a little scary because you're not used to that out here. Because even though I grew up in Oregon, we had Republican senators. A Republican senator usually from Oregon is way more liberal than a Southern Dixie crap, as they might say. So, and we have, you know, gay rights. We have a lot of, um, you know, we invented gay marriage here in San Francisco. So we're really okay with a lot of people being whatever they want to do. The back Black Lives Matter was a big was a big deal here. Where are you kind of politically and culturally as far as uh, rights, you know, red state, blue state, being in the middle, kind of, are people comfortable there? Is it mo lean more one way or the other? Is it changed? Maybe talk about that. I'm kind of curious. Well, um, I will tell you that Nashville uh, is a city, and like most cities in the United States, it, it leans Democratic because uh, that's just the way it goes for cities. Um, and they do flip back and forth, Republican or Democratic mayors, and we do flip back and forth on our governor. 
having said that, the bulk of the suburbs is Republican. And um, I don't know that I think it's in your face, but uh, that is the way that it is. And um, I do feel like there is respect here as far as, um, you know, we don't have ugly things happening. You know, there's not anti uh, gay or anti, uh, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't feel like there's movements against any group of people, but um, th this is part of the reason that it's a little bit calmer here now in the midst of this election year, because this is, you know, the, the state is going to go Republican. It would be shocking and completely unexpected if it did differently on a national level. Um, I do, Rebecca, have people from California who move here because they just can't, they are unhappy with the politics in California. Um, and they, you know, I actually have a couple of those right now. I just had a lady and she's coming from uh, Baltimore, Maryland. And she's like, I have to get out of here. I just have to. And so it's like, she can't wait to buy a house. She's buying a house sight unseen um, because she's just in such a hurry to get out. So people are different. And um, I, I, you know, obviously there are multiple, you know, views. So it's not as if just because it's a Republican suburban area that that means everybody's Republican. That's certainly not the case. And um, as I said, the city uh, county is certainly de leans Democratic, but for some people, they are leaving California because of the politics. Um, yeah, I, I, if anything, I, I would say it's maybe too liberal sometimes. It just, I mean, I anywhere else I'm a liberal I'm not a liberal here I'm a what they call moderate we have so many shades of blue that it's just uh, crazy so I agree with you that a lot of it is too crazy and people are leaving from that but that means fewer of us to fight the good fight to try to make it better so it's just kind of it's kind of sad in a lot of ways so well anyway. hopefully we all want it better it's just a matter of what you think that is <laughs> I, I was going to say Peggy congrats on uh, wooing Ben Shapiro to Nashville I don't oh. know if you follow him, but uh, he's leaving LA and his entire. Uh, yes. Path. Yeah. That made big news. Yeah. yeah. That's even news out here. <laughs> I, <clears throat> any other I, questions anyone has? Because now we're getting oh. towards the end of our time. <laughs> Sebastian, do you have any more questions? I was going to say I had the pleasure of uh, visiting Memphis for a week many years ago. And uh, everything that you all said about warmth, generosity, awesome food, music was on every corner, inside every restaurant. I didn't want to leave at all. And, um, you know, I will definitely put that, put Tennessee on my, uh, to visit again and possibly retiring in the future. So, well, you're welcome anytime, Eileen. I'd love to host you. Oh, is it, yeah, is it because awesome. of the tobacco, Eileen? I'm sorry. Is it because of the tobacco? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing her. Eileen's no. one of the politest smokers I know. Yeah, no, that's a uh, Eileen. We should go together. Let's figure this out when yeah. we can uh, go, and, and we'll go. Do, yeah, but what yeah. about one one thing? Um, you know, because what's important to me and a lot of people is just diversity and acceptance of different things. Uh, but also, um, I know you're famous for the ribs and the barbecue. Do you have healthier options? I, I, I haven't eaten meat in, you know, probably 15 years. So are there vegetarian or vegan options? And what about, you mentioned the lakes and the rivers. Do you have uh, fresh fish and stuff like that? Uh, we do. Uh, we have those opportunities. There are tons of, of um, restaurants. Um, uh, that that offer healthy eating, uh, even uh, prep and and meal preparation. There's several of those around that you can get them on the go. Clean eats, uh, first watch. I mean, scrambled Jake. I can name them all day long. It's uh, so the uh, juice bars. Uh, there's all types of opportunity there uh, to to eat healthy and and to live a little bit cleaner lifestyle. Uh, from from your eating habit perspective. I haven't jumped on that wagon fully. Um, <laughs> it's something I need to work on. I need to lose about 10 pounds. Um, 
but de definitely uh, those are available in Knoxville. That's good to know. And if you ever need help with uh, releasing excess fat, as Debbie Holloway likes to call it, um, over the last several years, uh, I, I, went, I, I, re I lost over 60 pounds. I was really big. That's and awesome. if you really want to know how to you. do it, there's a, the, I'll, I'll just share the one, I'm digressing, but the, the one secret is basically sugar is poison and stop eating sugar. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop this on Facebook right now. Um, but we can still chat a little bit more if you want. So if someone has to get going, okay. Anyway, I just wanna say thank you all for being here. I really, really appreciate it. It's been a great call. Um, I learned a lot and I'm really excited. Hopefully Eileen and I and Sebastian, we can all go visit Tennessee and we've got some great connections Definitely. there to do it. And I would love maybe just to get on, I heard these Mississippi riverboat things, they, they go from, they go St. Louis and Memphis and go down to New Orleans and something like that might be fun. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. So thank you again very, very much. And hopefully um, uh, we'll, we've got some people interested in Tennessee and wanting more information. And next week we will be talking about Georgia. So thanks again.